General Motors is feeling some heat from President Trump over the closure of its Lordstown plant in Ohio. The commander in chief tweeting this over the weekend. Just spoke to Mary Barra, CEO of General Motors, about the Lordstown, Ohio plant. I am not happy that it is closed when everything else in our country is booming. I asked her to sell it or do something quickly. She blamed the UAW union. I don't care. I just want it open. General Motors responding with, quote, we remain open to talking with all the affected stakeholders, but our main focus remains on our employees and offering them jobs in our plants where we have growth opportunities. Here now, Wall Street Journal tech and autos reporter Tim Higgins. Tim, good to see you bright and early this morning. And the president also took aim at the uh, UAW chief, the union chief, in that part of Ohio. What do you make of what's happening with that plant and the president weighing in? Well, on one hand, he needs to, right? This was a campaign issue, uh, promising jobs there and, and telling people to, to keep their houses because they, they were going to be safe. But on the other hand, it, it's a savvy move here to poke at the UAW, especially the local leadership. Those local rank and file workers, uh, many of them support Trump. And so uh, here's, a, here's a base that he needs to support, whereas the leadership of the UAW has traditionally supported Democrats. They have a political arm. They're very active in presidential campaigns, whether it's through money or organizing. And here's an opportunity to put a wedge there potentially. It, so that raises the issue, Tim. Is it just political for him to do this? Because anybody who believes in, well, free markets kind of gets the shivers when the president is tweeting about the closure of one plant. And talk about that. So it appears to be, is it just political? Are there any indications that the government is going to take a hand in, in doing something about this, this Lordstown plant? Well, when it comes to General Motors, Lordstown plant has long been political there. Remember, go back to the Obama administration. Uh, that cruise, the small car that was made there, really became kind of a symbol of the Democratic uh, administration's efforts to save uh, General Motors uh, uh, with bankruptcy reorganization. And then it became a political hot button uh, through the presidential campaigns that followed. Mm -hmm. So Lordstown has long been a place where politics and business have uh, swirled together. And though I mentioned David Green, the UAW 1112 president, David Green, did comment on Fox News yesterday about the role of union salaries in the plant's closure. Listen to this. General Motors has uh, plants all over the country. They're UAW uh, negotiated facilities. Uh, you know, I, you make $30 an hour, whether I'm in Ohio, Tennessee, Alabama, um, the, the, you know. Well, the I mean, there, there's, a re there's, a re there's a reason, though, that this, the major foreign companies don't like dealing with the unions and go to states where they don't have to. Well, they like to exploit workers. Workers just want to have a seat at the table. We don't want handouts. We just want a fair day's work okay. for a fair day's pay. Well, Tim, why didn't the union workers in, in that region at that plant have a seat at the table, so to speak? What was in the contract with, with the UAW by General Motors that would let them to basically shut down this entire plant? Well, technically, it's not closed, I guess. That's really what GM is doing is setting up this to be a negotiating point in the, the contract this summer. We're heading into a big uh, round of, of contract talks between the G, uh, GM and the UAW, but also Ford and Chrysler. And so what's going on right now is going to put intense pressure on those talks, higher than normal, because, A, this is becoming uh, a political issue. So you've got GM mm -hmm. going to the table with the UAW, and this isn't just about the economics uh, of those contracts, but it becomes something uh, beyond that. That uh, becomes really kind of a, a discussion in this country about jobs in America. Tim, talk about the, the need for General Motors to close this plant, however. That General Motors, and please correct me if I'm wrong, has more excess capacity, if you will, than some of the other automakers in the United States. I'm thinking about Ford and even Chrysler Jeep, that this was kind of a necessity. Well, that's the argument that GM is making. We've seen a remarkable shift in consumer taste uh, in the U.S. auto market here, um, away from kind of a split between cars and SUVs and trucks to really favoring SUVs and trucks, moving away from small cars. Lordstown was a factory that was making small cars that co consumers just were not interested in buying. And so uh, one of the problems that GM has is that it's got a lot of excess capacity for small cars, and it's looking for ways to get rid of that. And anybody who remembers the auto bailout, it was a $50 billion bailout of General Motors by the federal government wants, quite frankly, wants GM to right size and to have the right amount of capacity for the automobiles that it sells. Right, Tim? 
Well, that's one of the ironic things here is that the old GM uh, leadership was really criticized heavily for not making the tough decisions to close right. plants or not being able to make those tough decisions to close plants um, years before they needed to. And here you've got Mary Barra uh, really being proactive in a way that we didn't see from previous mm -hmm. GM leadership. Tim, what's the next, I'm going to put you on the spot, what should we watch for in the, as this plays out between GM, the, UA, the local UAW, the overall contract negotiations, and even the president? What are the next steps, you think? Well, the thing that caught my eye, uh, my eye recently was the UAW had its uh, big leadership uh, meeting in Detroit, and they increased the uh, strike pay. Uh, so we're heading into talks this summer. Um, the, the, the union really put it, putting itself in a position to, to really fight uh, at the table because remember they have some pressures as well because of some recent scandals that the local rank and file are a little dubious of if they're getting the best deal and so they're going to be under a lot of pressure not to just uh, give whatever GM wants. Tim great to see you as always terrific insight Tim Higgins from the Wall Street Journal and thank you for getting up so early. Tim's in San Francisco by the way. Take care we'll see you soon. Thank you.